the meaning is behind your quote, please? Okay. This one against all odds. Uh, originally, this was going to be called the survivor. Um, this tree, this whole idea, the concept, I've had in the back of my mind for about five or six years. And I've always been um, totally blown away, it's the only reason, the only way I can say it, by the trees such as those in Utah, uh, Rice Canyon, those areas, that they seem to be living in rock. Their, their little roots are just barely into the rock. And I've actually seen trees where the whole root system was above ground, and it's like the little tippy toes were in the rock. And I'm always amazed at how these trees manage to not only hang on for dear life, but how they not only survive as well, but they, they thrive. So, and I always I, I, um, identify with trees, and I always look at them almost as individuals or people. And to me, the metaphor was that these people, the people like the trees, can hang on, not only hang on it, through physical challenges or the human challenges that they find themselves in, but that they can, they can thrive as well. And so, like I said, this has been something that I wanted to do for a long, long time. But because I'm on the road so much, it's difficult to get the time to actually work on it in big increments. And originally, the entire piece was going to be a piece, piece to piece, like I, with my regular uh, quilting technique. But then I bought a felting machine. And because I bought something, I felt I had to justify using it. So I started putting everything I could think of through this felting machine including cottons and polyester shears and silk and cheesecloth and everything in it. Of course, the needles would uh, create a mat as the barb needles would go through. So I ended up making my, uh, my trunk from the fel felted mats, creating the tree trunk, forming the sculpting the tree trunk. I also did that same technique with the leaves and had so much fun with the felting machine. It was, that was kind of mindless because it's just very relaxing to see those needles go up and down. The sky was supposed to be pieced, but it wouldn't be. I kept creating the sky, trying to piece it, and it just wasn't right. And when you, you know when, the, when it's not flowing, you know that it's the quilt's telling you it's not being what it needs to be. And I kept hitting a brick wall, so I stood back and I took another look and I thought, well, what if I, in a previous quilt, I had used uh, layering multiple shirogansas with uh, different colors, and I was very successful at that. And I thought, well, maybe I can do the same with this technique, even though know, this quilt's much bigger. And unbelievably, that sky went together in two days. And it has about eight layers of polyester shear under it. And uh, then as I went to place the tree where I wanted it, originally when I made it, these were the branches and those were the roots. But you should always be flexible. And as I was looking at placement, I thought, what if? Always ask yourself, what if? I turned it upside down and I liked it so much better. So this became the branches and these became the roots. These were the rocks, these the way I normally piece. And from after the sky, everything went together very beautifully and it began to flow again, like it was the flow. So um, I ended up stuffing some of it with the trapunto like style to get more dimension out of it. But the whole idea is this tree represents people and it's dedicated to people who struggle in their life with challenges and yet not only manage to survive, but thrive. How long did it take you to make this particular quilt? At least two years. And it's not because that's not one long time, that stop, start, and stop, and mm -hmm. start.